Hello everybody, uh, in this video I'm going to do the previous video but in blueprints. So this is for 2D animation in a 3D world but using no C++. You will not have to open up an IDE, you don't need a code at all. So let's get to it. So I'm, I've already um, shown how to set up a, this stuff multiple times, so please check out the other videos. Uh, if you want to look into that, you need to have an enum with your animation directions and your struct with your flipbooks uh, set up. You want to make a paper character class, go into blueprint class, search for paper character, and make that guy. I've already made one here called BP Pure Paper Character. Once you're here, you're going to need to have a variable of your enum as well as your struct of flipbooks. Once you have those, Set the default value for the enum to down. Your flipbooks fill in with all of your flipbooks. Now, off the begin play, you want to search for on character movement updated, and you're going to bind an event to on character movement updated. And the event we're binding is a custom event that you want to call animate. Off of animate, you want to get the player controller of index zero, which will be the local get the player camera manager off of it and we're going to go into a brand new function and send that camera rotation in called set animation direction now again this is all pretty much just straight off of another video of how to how this logic works for animating a character and their flipbook directions in which way they're facing in this function you could inherit a, uh, a player character which you will do but and you can override this function but I went ahead and just dumped it all in here. You're going to check if the players, if this character is player controlled. And using that as a boolean for select nodes, we're going to decide whether to use the actors forward and right vectors, or if we're going to use that camera rotation that comes in. If we're in AI, we're going to want to use the player's camera rotation. And we have to get that off of them in order to have this work. If we're just the personal player, then we just want to use our actor forward and right vectors. We're going to get the velocity, normalize it in 2D, dot product it with that vector, with the forward vector and the right vector, taking both of those. That's how you get forward speed and right speed. I've done a little printout here so that you can see it in the output log. We're going to check if we're moving. If we are moving, then we've got this little set here so we're setting our enum direction value based on boolean logic of which direction based on our speeds you can look through here pause and create all of this to your heart's content and study it up so that's how we choose an animation direction and again really this can be separated out into an override if you override this function in the player so that you don't have to do this, but if you do it here, you're just checking if we're player controlled or not, and then that's how we decide which vector we want to use for forward and right vectors. Once we've called that function and set our animation direction, we're continuing on, and this is again just review. We're setting the flipbook based on our velocity, our vector length, are we idle or are we walking, and we're selecting from our struct of all our various flipbooks and we're selecting based on the direction. We're using select nodes again and selecting and setting the new flipbook based on the direction. So really the funky stuff here is again binding this event to on character movement updated to call this event. So we are not calling it on the tick. Only when our movement updates are we animating. I created a child blueprint class off of that character for the player par player character, the player paper character. Uh, this is where I gave it a spring arm and camera. Things you need to do. Your sprite should, you want to scale upwards. I found if you're a 16-bit sprite, a 16 by 16 sprite, uh, you want to scale by 11 in all the axes. Your rotation value needs to change from relative to world. In the player character, add the spring arm and the camera to, so that they're parented onto the capsule component. The spring arm you can leave as default uh, rotation and all that. Our target arm length, 1500, is what I found was nice. 
turn off inherit roll, turn on use pawn control rotation, inherit pitch and yaw. Lag just makes it smooth out so it feels nice. On the camera, change the perspective field of view to 55 degrees. On character movement, find the character movement rotation settings, use controller desired rotation needs to be checked on. Once you have those, as you can see, this is all the blueprint classes, and I just dumped in two of the basic ones in there. I didn't build any AI this time. So I've gone ahead and put together some AI. Now the material you're using, again, camera position multiplied by 110, object position, subtract that value from that, normalize it, break it out into two float components, R goes into the X, G goes into the Y of an arc tangent too fast, divide that value by pi, divide it again by 2, add by 0.25, grab a rotate about axis, object orientation is the normalized rotation axis, that value is the rotation angle, texture coordinates, append a masked and the R value into a transform position, pass that to the pivot point. Absolute world position is the position. That goes into world position offset. Grab your basic, uh, this is uh, just yanked off of your standard sprite material from the engine. This material makes it so that no matter where the camera is positioned, that material always faces the camera, and that's how you get that to occur. They all still face the camera, it's performative, and based on our camera rotation, their animation runs in the correct direction away from our camera or towards our camera. So There you go.